Let's have a word of prayer before we start. Father, we thank you for your word, for your truth as we open it before us. And we just ask you to open our eyes and our hearts to the truth in your word. Help us to see beyond what we already know. Help us to see beyond that. Help us to see what you're trying to show us and teach us and tell us. Help us to not get our own belief systems in the way of your truth. Thank you, Father. You should have been. So here's his testimony. Here's Mark's testimony. He wanted me to share it with you guys. He says, I want to praise God for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. He says, about 12 years ago, I was diagnosed, diagnosed with having an aorta that was shown to be calcified, have a calcified wall. Okay, well, that's something you don't get over, right? I mean, and it's your aorta. You know what that is. That's the big, that's the big boy out of the top of your heart. Um, um, an ultrasound, they just got an ultrasound just uh, recently. He's had a series of, of tests in the last couple of weeks. An ultrasound uh, a few days ago performed showing that his aorta is normal and that any other findings there were inconsequential. But, you know, Yahweh our healer. Amen. He says, I've recently been able to reduce my blood pressure medication from three different medications down to two, and then of those two, one of them has been cut in half. And we've seen that. This is not, this is not the first time we've heard this story, is it? Especially with blood pressure, and, and that's another thing we deal with, especially in, um, in uh, the Holocaust Chaim teaching. Uh, we had really good success if we realized what's going on there. On the 16th, which was two day, uh, yesterday, I guess it was yesterday morning, because today's the 17th, according to my computer. He said, I had a heart cath this morning, so yesterday morning, and the results of that were that there were no significant blockages, resulting in me only needing, and he already knew he needed this, he needed a, a valve replacement and a valve repair. He knew he had two bad valves. It's been going on for years. It's not new. Okay. But the problem was he had blocked arteries. You know, it's like... You know, what are we going to do? Just, you know, go in and you can't just change an aorta. I mean, you know, you, you can't just, you can't, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to bypass an aorta. It would be very significant. Um, but, you know, that was one of the real problems. It's like they can repair the valve, but if you've got all these blockages around, that's going to be really problematic. And so you've got no blockages of any consequence. And um, so he says that the heart cath re resulted that there are no significant blockages in only needing a mitral valve repair, they can repair that valve, and an aortic valve replacement. My prayer had been that I would not need stents or bypass surgery, which God answered his prayer. And that's what he's been praying for several weeks. You guys probably heard that as we brought that up. Um, God is truly faithful when we call on Him. Um, John 14, 13 through 14. If you ask anything in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name or in my authority, I will do it. And Yahweh does answer our prayers when they are according to His will. In other words, He has a direction. And so, and He quoted here the King James uh, the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, some of us can wrap our heads around that language, but um, I want to look. I want to look specifically at that. I want. I want because um, most of us don't talk like that. And what I found there is an interesting thing. There's actually more to the verse. And if you look at the verse, let's look at that verse. James chapter 5 and I'm going to start in about verse 13 <clears throat> he was quoting 15 which is what we normally quote <clears throat> but given what we've been talking about with healing with you know Holocaust Chaim all that verse 13 says this is James the brother of Yeshua he says is any among you suffering or sick let him pray is any cheerful let him sing praises I'm, I'm sorry I first one was, any among you suffering, let him pray. Is any, and, then, and then it says, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the assembly and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal him who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Okay? Verse 16. 
Confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The insistent prayer of a righteous person is powerfully effective. That's a more modern translation of those words. Um, and so, so think about that. And he goes on to talk about, uh, there he says, Elijah was a man with nature just like us, right? He's a prophet, but I mean, he's still just a guy, right? And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it didn't rain on the earth for three years and six months. Okay? And, and he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. And it goes on. It says, Brothers, if any among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. We could spend all day on this little paragraph. <laughs> yeah, there, you see how much is in there? But so it is, it is proper here, it's saying it's proper for us to pray. It is proper, um, you know, for us to sing praises and, uh, you know, before the, thing, the very things we've been doing this morning. Um, to call and be anointed. Um, verse 16, I think, is several of these is really important. Confess your offenses one to the other and pray for one another that you may, may be healed. Okay. Um, wait a minute. What did I just say? Confess your offenses, and some translations say sins, to one another and then pray. I added the then, but it's in the order. That you may be healed. See, the Torah teaches Deuteronomy 28, 29, and 30 very consistently. Three consistent chapters teaching that if we're in disobedience to the instructions of God, which is what the word Torah means, that we will, one of the consequences, in fact, a major part of the consequences, is illness, sickness. Okay? Does all sickness come from disobedience? Yes, 100% of it. I got y'all shocked now. Let me ask it a different way. Does 100% of sickness come from our personal disobedience? No. A whole bunch of it comes from our great, 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 great grandfather, daddy, that we all have the same, Adam. When he sinned, the entire world fell into entropy where things are running, things are running downhill. That's just the way they are. God started it going. It was going to just go at that speed and that consistency for eternity. But a process called entropy started, you know, at, at, in the garden. And things started winding down. We're part of those things that are winding down. He winds us up, gets us going, and we wind down. Okay, so it's, it's a normal process of, some of this is normal stuff. But if you look specifically at, of course, 1 John 3, 4, it says sin is the transgression of the Torah, the instructions of God. And you look at, at James, the brother of Yeshua, teaching here how to be healed. He's basically, he's saying that if we are personally in sin, if we are personally in disobedience to the instructions of God, if you're in disobedience to the instructions, you're not going to walk in blessing. It's just the rule. That's what he said back in Deuteronomy 28. He said, no, if you walk in disobedience to these instructions, you're going to walk in curses. And a major part of those curses is sickness. Okay? Now, sometimes we can be young and healthy and, and we'll overcome it, you know, just because of our vigor and age and health. And I don't know how many people in this room, I'm willing to raise my hand, can say that stuff I done when I was younger is kicking my butt right now. You know, it's like it's, it's catching up. We say, oh, it's just catching up with me. And you know, it's like, I remember the, it's like, man, that hurts. Yeah, I remember that tumble. You know, it's like 30 years ago. You know, you remember some some major tumble, and it's like you were you were able to push through it then, and you thought it went away. It's like no. So there's there's consequences of physical actions. Why in the world would we think there's not consequences of spiritual actions? So even though we may be able to overcome some of the consequences of some of the spiritual stuff with time, it ultimately will catch us. But God. You want to destroy everything the enemy throws at you? I've got two words for you. But God, I mean, seriously, we know what he said. He says right here, not if you ever sin. It's like confess your sins 
we confess our sins, ask for forgiveness, and we can step into that forgiveness. We can step, and he's basically saying, do that and then pray for healing. You don't say operate in, this, in the rebellion and pray for healing. That doesn't work. And, and by the way, I'll share with you that Mike has gone through a lot of that. And he's just, you know, that's a big thing. And that's why I'm sharing it with you because that's a big part of, of, of what he would share with you if he was here. Is that he spent a lot of time searching and looking, Lord, what am I doing? And I'm just saying that's something we all should do. Especially, you know, any, any kind of sickness. Not much less a, uh, something major like that. Any kind of sickness. We need to challenge, ask God, so what am I doing? Because most of the time we can't see it. I mean, if we could see it, we'd do something about it. But we've got to ask Him to show it to us. What are we doing? Help me to recognize that. Repent of it. Step out of it. And by the way, one of the, one of the definitions of grace, that everybody knows the definition of unmerited favor. It's also unmerited power and authority. So we have, we not only have the favor, we have the power and the authority, not of ourselves, but of Him to be able to walk through and push through and step into these things. Amen? Okay. Alright, that was fun. I just wanted to, I want to do that.